Hey guys, Cassie TV here with another Path of Exile video, and I'm gonna do a really quick video, a TLDR of how the fuck to uh, price check items. First off, in the links in the descriptions below, you'll find yourself a program called Awaken PUE Trade. This is what most of us use to help price checking. This is obviously not accurate all the time because you'll have to learn how to use it. I'm not going to make a, I'm not going to make a guide on how to use this, but I will show you how I'm utilizing it and how you can search for different items for trade. Now I'm going to take a couple of examples that I have up for sale and we'll see how this goes. So first off, I have a quickening covenant, for example. And the first thing you want to do is check the rolls on this. This one is corrupted and it cannot roll. And the numerical values is between 12 and 16. Now, in this case, we have to understand which builds are actually using these items. And if you're unaware of that, it is very helpful to start searching for it. Another tip for this is that if I put this item up for sale for 20 chaos, I'm going to get spammed. And if I'm getting spammed, then I know I've mispriced it. So in this case, I can use the keybinds to start this. It will tell me this worth 2.5 divines. The binds up for 2.9, so maybe I mispriced this. We can skip the spell suppression because it really doesn't matter. Now it says 2.2. And now we know that the best roll here is the attack speed, which is 15%. So I can check for 15% attack speed for the builds that use that. And that means the price is 2.5 divines. And if I only look at the cast speed, 13 maybe is different. No, 2.4. But in this case, we know that attack speed is 15%. And we know that the builds that utilizes this is the Sumancer build, Poison SRS, Poison Enemy Weapon, and a bunch of other builds there with minions that want to use this, such as Dominating Blow in a higher budget, for example. And these things come with experience. So knowing that, I can now see that, hey, I've mispriced this, and I can choose to undercut the market by putting it up for 2.4 instead. And why is it it's important to learn how to price check your items is because even if you price your big items and get some good money out of the big ticket items, you're not going to sell your cheap items unless they are priced. When you are searching to buy something, you are not looking for unpriced items. You are literally searching for items that has a price tag. So if you want to sell your cheap items, you have to do a price check on everything. That's why you should never ask someone else to price check your items because you might have 50, 100, 2, 3, 4, 500 items up for sale and you need to price every single one of them. So this video hopefully will help you do that. Now, I'm going to take a couple of examples of other items, such as uh, synthesized items. So we got a whisper and a question from Bumby Beer asking how to price the Mask of the Tribunal. Now, again, it's very important to understand what, item, what builds are using these items. In this case, Mask of the Tribunal is actually used by Aurobots. And he priced this for 20 chaos and he got spammed beyond belief. Now, why is that? And that is because synthesized items... They normally have random synthesized implicit modifiers. So in this case, if you look at the modifier list, which is going to be a bit hard for you guys to see there. Let's see if I can do it this way. Uh, there. As you can see here, some of the mods are 6 or 2%. Those 6 and 2% modifier rolls are uh, the crit multiplier for player dexterity, 100 dexterity and 2 caspi per 100 intelligence. That's not very good. However, it has a really good implicit that says 15% increased effect on non curse or of your skills. And that is very, very good for Aurobots. So the build that specifically wants to use this item, there is a modifier that directly scales it, that specific type of build. So if I price check this with a tool, it will tell me that it's up to 5 chaos worth. And I always check this and then check the trade by clicking on the trade button. We'll get you to the window, showing uh, not the wall, but to the window. Uh, so you see that these are going for about 1 chaos. That's nothing. But that's not the reality with this specific item, because the implicit in this case has increased scaling of non curse auras. And this scaled from 10 up to 15%. So you can check from 10% and see that, hey, this is going for 16 divines. That's a big ass difference. And the reason he found out was because he put it up for lower than it should be and he got spammed. And that was an indicator that, hey, I might have, must have mispriced this. Check in the trade window, I can then see that, hey, it's going for 16 divines because of that modifier specifically. So I know now that I could price this item for 15, 16 divines, simply because the rolls he has is 6%, 6 crit multi and 2% cast speed, which is the same as this bot, uh, lowest one here. So 15, 16 divines seems to be the good price to pri uh, put it up. And all of these things comes with experience. And so what would then happen if these wouldn't exist on the market? And he put it up for 20 chaos and he got spammed. And then he would ask, yo, Gassi, why, uh, what, how do I price this? There's nothing on the market. Well, if there's nothing on the market, that's when it gets really tricky. And at the same time, very easy. If you have nothing you can compare with, it is very hard to verify 
uh, the price on the item. And at that point, you have to just randomly come up with a number that you think it's worth and then price it higher than that. And then if it doesn't sell within a day or two, just lower it a little bit every day, maybe lower it twice a day till it sells. That's the only way you can find where the price is. Is you might deem an item to be worth uh, 50 divines. But uh, if the market doesn't want to buy it for 50 divines, they, you can just lower it till you reach the point where someone is willing to pay a certain price for it. And that's what the item is worth. And that's the only way you can play around with prices or items that you can't find any similar items on the market with. So I'm going to show another example, and that is a ring that uh, Kaka, one of my moderators that I play with a lot, sold the other day, and that is this ring. Now, I want to let it, post in the comments down below before watching further in this video. Post the comment down below what you guys think this ring sold for. And when you've done that, then you can click play again, and I will tell you how this uh, item actually went. And the reason we're going to do this is because of how important it is to check modifiers. Now, at first glance, I thought this ring was shit. Kaka even told me that he was about to vendor it before he double checked it. I thought this was trash. And then I had to take another look at it. And then I realized this is good money. This ring sold for three divines. Now, this was a day or two ago. Uh, and we're going to price check this ring real quick. So what I'll do is I'll search for a ring. And I'm going to search for a high life roll because it, these mod it rings, they want to have a decent amount of life or energy shield. It also has a good amount of resistances. In this case, it has uh, 26 plus 45. So let's just search for 70 plus elemental rust. It also has an open prefix modifier. Actually, has two open prefix modifiers, which is even better. And then it has chaos rest. Now, chaos rest is not very good, but it definitely is a reasonable amount of chaos rest, which is actually increasing the price of this. Now, I may ignore the accuracy roll. Just looking at this modifier here, you'll see that these are shit. This is what I saw. I completely neglected the existence of accuracy. And this is trash. I would have vendored this. If I start including accuracy of 400 plus, or in this case, 450, you can see that this ring is suddenly going for three or five divines. Just because of that modifier. Bow builds are using it. Uh, yeah, accuracy stackers are using it. And I'm not very experienced with those builds, so I didn't think about those existing. So when I first looked at it, I thought it was trash. By including these modifiers in the, in the uh, Woke PV trade, or in this case, we're doing it manually, and just do, do a proper check on the actual modifiers on the item, I can realize and I can then be informed that, hey, this is actually good money because of those modifiers. And as you can see, this is worth a lot. Like, these are actually worth money compared to what I first saw in this ring. And that just shows how important it is to actually price check your items. And the same thing goes for higher budget items. The higher the budget on an item, the easier it is to price check, in my opinion. Uh, we can take an example of... Um, uh, we can take an example of uh, a pair of gloves uh, for specifically for certain minion builds that wants to go CI. So in this case, we can ignore the rest. Uh, the important stats are uh, on this item for minion builds is the minion damage the high energy shield, and in this case, also strength. And normally what I do is I search for a lower amount than what I have, obviously, to make sure I get items that are just around what I'm looking for. And in this case, it's only my pair of gloves. So if I take away the strength, perhaps then I see that there are some other items up for sale. And if I do it this way, I always open up the filter and take away the collapse listings by account, because uh, then I can see if people have multiple of them, which I actually have in this case. And I can see that uh, there's one over here. Matarak is selling this one. Uh, and this ring has, sorry, Glove have uh, Dexterity and Intelligence. Very good because Dexterity and Strength are very useful for minion builds normally. And Intelligence scales your, uh, your Energy Shield. And I can see that this is actually very accurately priced compared to what I have. Because this one is actually better than what I have. Uh, despite the slightly lower Energy Shield. Uh, thanks to the Intelligence. And because of this, I can then verify that the prices I put on my gloves in this current state is actually pretty accurate. And what he has seems to be pretty good. It's a little bit better than what I have, so uh, my, my gloves should be priced a little lower than his. And that makes sense. And if they don't sell within a day or two, I will just lower them a little bit till they do sell. Because it's only me and Madarak who has these gloves up for sale right now. So if that's not selling tomorrow, I'll just lower the price. Another thing to check would be, like I mentioned earlier, with synthesized implicit modifiers... Uh, would be to search for something like uh, life recovery or 
uh, energy shield recovery on block shields. Now, obviously, a lot of those wants to go surrender, but that tends to be very expensive, especially after they buffed it. It's 4.2 divines. That's very expensive. So there is an implicit version of this, an explicit version. What you could do is make a search saying recover uh, life... Um, life i can't even find it so if you have ser issues searching for things you can do a tilde and do a, a wild search so do a tilde and then search for life uh, you don't even have to finish the word wreck block uh on and uh, if you do it like this um i can see that um let's finish recover uh, recover i can't even spell recover uh block uh, on hit for example like this uh, I can just search for these modifiers specifically to find other types of modifiers. So if I take a look at what the Surrender had um, as an example, I think it's life gain on block. This is just life on block, right? Um, so if we take, if I try to find a pair of uh, a life recovery on block, it would be life recover uh, block. So in this case, you can see the modifier right there that recover percent life when you block, recover life, uh, flat life when you block. So we're looking for percent one, but there's an implicit as well. So if I look at recover percent life on block, and maybe I want some life on it as an example, uh, like this, you'll see some rare shields show up with either shape or crusader influence that has this modifier. What I could do as well is look for synthesized items. So I could do a tilde while, while search, say recover life block implicit, and then search for this. This is where Craft of Exile becomes uh, very effective as well to use, but we're going to search this on a non-unique by taking the item rarity. In this case, you can see that we have a synthesized Thorium shield with this as a synthesized implicit. Now, to understand what can roll on this shield if you decide to buy this and then craft on it, you can then go to Craft of Exile and I can search for a Thorium, thorium shield and I can see that this is the modifiers that can roll on this specific shield. There's no minion damage, there's no plus to the level of minion skills, which means that this is a pure energy shield base, which is fine. We have a golden buckler. In the golden buckler, we can take a look at that as well. Golden buckler. And in this case, what we can see here is that spell suppression can roll on this instead of uh, the, what couldn't roll on the energy shield version, as an example. So this is a good way to verify what can roll. So for example, if you have a fossilized spirit shield that actually normally would have had minion damage implicit, which is covered by the synthesized one, you can now see that this one can roll plus level of minion skills. It can also roll minion damage as an example. So there's plenty of things you can do and verify through Craft of Exile when it comes to these uh, type of items. But again, I just wanted to show you that you can search with the tilde key to search for modifiers. This is mostly used for large cluster jewels. Uh, so what I normally do when I search for specific large clusters is that I would search for a large cluster like this. And um, if I want to price check it manually, and then I would click on the magnifying glass. And then I would check in the item level, for example, 84. If I'm looking for a minion damage 84 jewel, I would then just take the modifier here that I got from just clicking the magnifying glass and remove the other modifiers and say, well, I'm looking for a 12 passive one. But if I want to look for something that has, say, vicious bites, then I can just search for vicious bites and it will show up. But if I want to search for something that has uh, the small passives grant energy shield, which I'm going to show you how that modifier looks. Uh, so we can see in here we have added small passive skill also grants 10 energy shield. Maybe you don't remember how exactly this is spelled, but you can search for added small passive skills also grant and then uh, two energy uh, maximum energy shield even instead of going through this you just do a tilde search you don't even have to finish the words pa grand small passive uh, energy shield i can just do this type of search with a tilde key and i can have the modifier right there making it much easier to search for and then click enter to search right so there are definitely a, a lot of tips and tricks one can do to to do searches better and how to price things but the tldr is this Look at all the modifiers, and with experience, you'll learn which builds and what builds are using certain items, and price it accordingly. And if you're having troubles with it, practice makes perfect. And if there's no other items that you can find for the item, price it wherever you think it's worth, and a little higher than that, and then lower it every day till it sells. That's all I have for you today. If you find this video useful, let me know in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Till then, stay safe. Keep rocking.